So I'm headed to get my hair cut. Thought I'd take a second and talk about professionalism and drumming, or really just music in general. Because some, some of the stuff I'm seeing is just like really disheartening. Like it's really, I, I mean it's unbelievable some of the stuff I'm seeing on stage. I saw something the other night and, and it, just, it just blows my mind that people take this opportunity that they have for when you're, you know, when you're on stage, that's a that's a gift. Like, you, you got people that would line up around the block to be able to do what you're doing, to be on that stage, to be able to perform in front of people. Not to mention you have people's attention. They're actually, in some cases, paying uh, to be there to see you or someone's paying to have your group in there. And so, uh, you know, I mean, that there's a certain level of professionalism that's gotta be maintained. So I go to this uh, a wedding the other night of uh, some really good friends, really, really, good people and just like to the nine it was a it was a it was a really uh, awesome Nashville style wedding way out on a ranch and you know it, it was like it was done upright they had, they had did it upright and they got this killer band this guy's been talking to me about this band for years and they do all the old Motown stuff they do all the old funk stuff you know like they, they, they kill it they got horns like everything man and uh, and this this band gets up and we're, we're headed to the wedding and Kelly's asking me, she says, well, I, I, I wonder who the band's going to be. I said, I know who the band's going to be. He's been talking to me about it for years. He's always he's going to use him at his daughter's wedding. So we get there. Sure enough, the band comes down. This front guy, he's got to be in the 70s, man. He's dressed to the nine, man. He's got his suit on, and he's killing it. Like, it's full-on dance moves. The guy is smoking. I look back there. I'm up on the, this is, we're, it's like in this barn. It's, this is Nashville. It's in like this fancy barn. So we're up on the top deck, you know, I guess the hayloft or whatever. And uh, and I look down, the first song comes on. I mean, they're just smoking. The You know, the horns are blowing. And everything's going. And I look back there, and this drummer is doing this on his phone. And he put it on his floor tom. Like, first song, first song of, of, of a very expensive wedding. They, they paid a, a good deal of money to get this band there. First song, sitting there like this, with the texting. And he puts it on his floor tom, and you know it's texting, because you can see the bubbles. You can see the blue and the green, whatever colors it was. And uh, I know what using a device on a gig looks like. Like, I get it. We use those for metronomes, we use it for clicks, we use it, I get that. Uh, charts, prompting, that looks different than... And then he would hold his phone up to his ear and have the text. I don't know if the people were talking to him. He'd listen to the text and then he would type back for like three songs. And a lot of you think I'm yelling in my videos. I'm not yelling. I'm just really passionate about this stuff. You got to get this kind of stuff through your head or you can't get past first base, right? You'll never get on base with, with music and doing it on a professional level. You're just never going to do it. I was sitting there and it was all I could do to keep from walking down there and saying something to somebody and being like, hey, what is going on back there? The guy's texting for like three songs. How much are you paid to be here? Put the phone down. But because of my massive respect for this family, just, I mean, they're, they're, they're great people. I wasn't gonna do that. But if I ever walk in on you playing a club date, and you've got your phone in your face, and you're on a stage in front of people, that's not only disrespecting the gig, that's disrespecting every person that's there trying to watch you and be entertained. That's disrespecting the club or the individual that's paying you. That's disrespecting the band leader. You should never do this. And I would think that this is common sense, but we seem to be losing a little of that. And I get it, like, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're you know, for 10 years we've had these things attached to us. So I get that they become a way of life, but when you're at work, and that's what a gig is, when you're at work, shut it off. Because I, let me tell you something, there are guys lined up, and ladies, lined up around the block that are better than you, and here's a, here's a clue, some of them are not even better than you. Some of them are technically not as good as you, but you know what, professionally, they kill you. And they are gonna take your gig every time. They are gonna come in, they're gonna be more professional, they're gonna know the music, they're not gonna have the phone in their face on their breaks, they're not gonna have the phone in their face, they're gonna be talking to the band, they're gonna be talking to people, they're going to be being a professional. So here's the deal, if you wanna play for fun, that's great man, go play dives and go get up there and text all you want, your girlfriend, your wife, whatever it is, like do your thing, 
but don't expect to get hired again. And if I ever walk in and see you doing that, you better believe I'm gonna say something because that can't go on. I get messages all the time. How do I get more gigs? How did? And I lead off with this: you have to treat every gig like it's Wembley Stadium. You have to treat everyone like it is, you know, Madison Square Garden. And that's not me saying that. Before I moved to Nashville, there was a great drummer named Will Denton. I didn't know anybody in Nashville. I had seen him, this was years ago, and I think I'd seen him in a magazine somewhere. I'm like, he lives in Nashville, maybe I can email him. You know, no thought that maybe he doesn't answer those emails. So I just emailed him, I'm like, we're moving there, do you have any tips for me? And the thing he said was not, ah, oh, you need to brush up on your Adam cues. Oh man, you really need to get your linear stuff on it. You need to work on your Afro-Cuban. None of that. He said, you need to treat every gig like it's Madison Square Garden. You need to treat every dive you play in, every low paying thing, every wedding, you need to treat it like it's a million dollar gig. And if you do that, you're gonna be okay. Because here's the deal, I don't, I've done this for years. I fed my family doing this. Like, I did the circuit. I did the cover band thing. I know you know me from YouTube and doing, you know, the online thing. I love doing that, but I love playing. And I cut my teeth on Bourbon Street at 19. I started playing in cover bands at 16. And then I got a full-time gig at 19. And I did this for three years full-time, six nights a week, sometimes playing doubles 10 hours a day. And I cut my teeth on people just cutting me on the gig and cutting me on the gig and telling me what I'm doing wrong. But let me tell you something, something I always was, was professional. And if I ever wasn't, that's when I got fired. I don't remember ever getting fired for not being able to play. But I remember being get let go, I, mean, I remember being let go, and it happened one time, for my lack of professionalism. And it was something I never even, I was like, that didn't even hit my radar. But I'm telling you, man, you can't treat these things like it's hanging out with your buddies and you know, you're gonna text your girl on the side or your guy on the side or your buddies and, and meet them afterwards. You've gotta approach this thing with a certain level of professionalism. I'm trying not to wreck here. You gotta search it with, you gotta approach it with a certain level of professionalism because I'm gonna tell you, they're, they're lining up out the door and they'll take your gig in a heartbeat because if you don't think you can be replaced, I got news for you. You can be replaced in a nanosecond. I'm telling you, in a nanosecond, by somebody that's better than you, or maybe not even better than you, they just got common sense. Come on, man, don't diss at the gig. It's really, it, I've, been, I've been pissed off about this for weeks, so there's my rant. Please be professional. When you get on the gig, put the phone down unless you're using it for something with the gig, a chart, a metronome, something like that. But other than that, come on, leave it at home.